Hello and welcome. Uh, today I want to talk to you about some changes I've made to my infrastructure. Uh, mainly I picked up a T-Mobile uh, wireless 5G gateway from the T-Mobile store. And uh, so I've gotten rid of my old ISP and I'm using this instead. I'm getting faster uh, download and upload speeds. I'm getting 200 and something megabits down and 100 and something megabits up. So it's really good. Uh, and it's $50, $50 a month all in uh, with their auto pay plan, which means that uh, it's always $50 a month. It's never more and it can never go up. It's a lifetime thing. And it even comes with a year of uh, Paramount Plus. So that's, I, I guess, about an $80 uh, item. So that's kind of nice to have. And uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, the main problem for me is that it does not allow uh, within the private IP address space to assign static IPs uh, for DHCP. That means that I can no longer use my uh, Raspberry Pi for a Pi hole server because I can't be certain what IP address it's going to be. Uh, so I can't point my Mac Mini to my Raspberry Pi. It might not be that address when I need it. So I've decided instead to run Docker on my Mac Mini. And uh, let's go over to the desktop here and take a look out on the Docker Hub. Oops. So out here on the Docker Hub, there's uh, the PyHole PyHole uh, container. And they tell you how to set it up here. There's a YAML file. You copy this and paste it into a YAML file on your machine. Uh, I would recommend that you set the password in here. Uh, so uncomment this, right? Delete this little hash mark and uh, put, a, put a new password in here. And uh, yeah, now on, uh, on Mac OS, you have to run a program called uh, Docker Desktop. So rather than running Docker as a service, as you would in Linux, uh, here it's run as an application. So if you come into settings here, you can set this up so that it opens Docker dashboard at startup, uh, which is not great because that means you have to have this app running all the time, but it's not terrible. Uh, it's something I can, I can live with. And if we run over to uh, activity monitor, you'll see that it doesn't really grab that much memory. It's grabbing around 300 megabytes altogether for the, these applications and for the container. And for the CPU, it's grabbing just about nothing. So uh, it's, this, is, this is very lightweight. It's not a problem to run this. And uh, so here's my container running. And then you will open up your system preferences, go into the network pane and uh, go into advanced and DNS. And of course you have to click the little lock at the bottom and put your password in. And then you set the, uh, the new, you can delete the old uh, information that's in there and put in 127.0.0.1 as your DNS server. And I like to include 8.8.8.8 underneath it so that if there's a problem, uh, if I close the Docker desktop by mistake or something goes wrong, it will use uh, Google's uh, uh, DNS server. So yeah, so that's kept in there as a backup but uh, you want to go to 127.0.0.1 and it's going to be greasy fast uh, because it's local. 
So it's one hop away. Now, uh, one of the things that I recommend setting in here is uh, if you go over to your Pi-hole server and you go into, well, first of all, uh, when you do this, you'll probably get an error. Here in tools, you'll see an error that the, the memory is a problem. Uh, and this is a known bug. Uh, and it's it doesn't harm anything, but it's annoying to have that message there. So I like to get rid of it. Uh, so basically, you go into uh, docker exec minus it pi hole bash like that, and from in here, cd into etsy, and then from here, you run this, uh, you want to run vim of that file, and you want to add this check, oops, have that happen, check under disk equals zero. Uh, and once you do that and reboot, then uh, you're not going to have that error message anymore. But in order to do this, you have to have Vim on your system, and Vim does not come on this. So you have to do a uh, apt. You don't have to do sudo because you're already root in here. That's what this hash mark means. But you do an apt update like this, and this will find all of the repositories that you can use. And once you know the repositories, now you can do a, a apt install vim. And that will give you the vim program. And uh, then you can run this vim etsy pihole, pihole-ftl.conf and add in the check disk equals zero, check under disk equals zero. All right, so that's that. And uh, the other thing that I think you should you should set in here. Go back to the dashboard. Uh, where's settings? Settings down here. Over here. When when you come in here, you'll see potentially dangerous options. Respond only to interface. ETH0. This is checked originally. I unchecked it and checked this instead. Allow only local requests. So that allows only queries from devices that are at most one hop away. Uh, and so this is the only machine that's going to be using that server. So that's one hop. And uh, Otherwise, you have to make sure that you're properly firewall. So I would recommend you just do it this way. It's easy. And then uh, you will start to, to block queries. Now, you can also go in here, I guess, in Tools and Update Gravity. And what this will do is it will pull down the newest list of all the stuff that uh, should be blocked. And so you want to do this periodically to make sure that you have uh, the most up-to-date blocking list. Uh, so if there's sites that have malware and things like that, uh, you will not go to those. Uh, and if there are new ads come out, this will block the new ads. So. Yeah, it's worth doing. Anyway, that's it. That's all there is to setting this up. And uh, I think it's worth doing. Uh, it will s speed up your experience. Uh, I thank you for joining me. And, you know, like and subscribe and all that stuff. Thank you very much. And bye-bye.